hi everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you're doing great i hope you're doing fantastic i hope your day is going according to plan and if it is not just know that no condition is permanent and with god all things are possible and in all things let's give glory to god to God be the glory, great things he has done. So love thee, the world that he gave us his son. Who come to the Father, to Jesus the Son. Okay, focus. The topic is squatters. Dealing with squatters. Welcome to my channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Aquaba, which means welcome. It's a saying... Eh, yeah. I hope say so. oh, yeah. well if you're new to my channel thank you for stopping by make sure that you hit the subscription button and click on the bell the notification bell this way when I upload a video you will be the first to know you will be the first to know and if you're returning to my channel Welcome. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Aquaba. Aquaba, Aquaba, Aquaba. And so today's topic is about squatters. You know, like when you start um, building your land and you flow the top of the land and squatters decide to move in because there's no work going on. Okay. So let me tell you about my story. First, let's define what squatter is. Is that how you say it? Squatter? Squatters. Squatters, my accent. Me L, ne me R, no. So let's define what squatter is. So, by definition, it is a person who unlawfully occupies an uninhibited building or unused land. We usually the residential that the squatter does not own that the squatter does not own i repeat that the squatter does not own rent or otherwise have lawful permission to use can you imagine? This is not your land. This is not your house. This is not your building. Why occupy it? So that was my story. So let me tell you what this story is all about. So if you didn't watch my last video that I posted, make sure that you watch that. That is Building in Ghana, episode one. Um, I was talking about the challenges and the um, difficulties that I faced when I started building my house in Ghana. So, I will make sure to link it down below. So, after the lentil stage and the, the, the building was flowed, it's a two-story building. So, after they flowed the first level of the building, um, work stopped. I had to travel outside of Ghana. So, I mean, I was there um, to build, to do as much that I can do. And when I'm not there, just work stopped. So, when I left, a month or two later, I was told that who have occupied my land now so um i had my cousin go there and give them a notice to like you know vacate the premises because it doesn't belong to them but no they did not adhere to the warning they did not move from my place i went to find out who was staying at my place okay so there were four groups of people staying there four groups basically four groups of people were staying in the building you know so each group of people have just taken you know their space like for, for instance um one group which is like a husband and wife took the living room area downstairs because there's a living room downstairs there's two bedrooms there's the kitchen um you know the walkway and what have you so one family occupied the living room another family occupied the kitchen area um and then a third occupied the first bedroom and then the fourth occupied the fourth bedroom so in doing so these people have the nerve to um 
they put windows wooden windows because at this time i didn't have the windows i mean the building was flowed um i will insert a picture if i can find you know the stage that i was in so they just occupied the place um the one that occupied the living room area so they took it upon themselves to scrape the ground put windows wooden windows and put doors so they just put fixtures fixtures on the house can you imagine they did that so um one family took the living room another the bedroom the other the third second bedroom and the kitchen area so both place all places were occupied they've just made it into their own moved in you know bring their um furniture and whatever utensils whatever they need to occupy you know just which whatever you need to survive they had it in that house so um another thing too one of um down the street i used to buy my um blocks where we buy cement and you know the blocks to lay um to build um the guy that we buy from the guy that we buy from the company down the street um the guy was nice i mean i used, I used to deal with him i go there and i let him know how many blocks of um you know blocks you know that blocks i don't know if i'm explaining it right so i let him know how many that i need and he would just bring it over you know in a in a truck and deliver it so i had a very nice rapport with him um he was just a nice guy so he was one of the people that occupied the place he took um i believe the bigger bedroom so he took that and occupied it so then when i came back to ghana i'm like okay I need to get these people out of my house so that I can continue this building um, process. Well, so they told me, I'm like, how, why, why are you occupying this place? Who gave you the authority? Who gave you the right to just occupy somebody's um, building? So they told me that the carpenter, you know, the carpenter rented the place to them he was actually charging them rent to stay at my house can you imagine this is the point where people usually put like a funny um, um, clip you know insert a, fu a, a funny clip but I don't know how to do it this is I'm new at this so bear with me you know bear with me I will get better at this so they told me that the carpenter rented the place to them this carpenter used to work at the site. I mean, he worked there for a long time. He was also a nice guy and I had a nice rapport with him. He was a hard working guy. I trusted him. I mean, I didn't give him um, the right to, you know, have people come and live there, but he was a nice guy. I treated him right. I trusted him. He just, you know, worked there for a very long time. So anyway so they told me that this carpenter um rented the place to him so i set out to look for the carpenter who had the audacity the audacity to rent out my house to rent out my unfinished uncompleted building okay oh god oh god did i do it right excuse me okay cynthia you're not funny all right seriously focus Cynthia focus okay so then um first I went to go see this carpenter I, the uh, the place where we buy the blocks you know the guy in the cement the guy was closer to our walk there and he was like oh I'm, um yeah 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 I'm occupying the place well you know I know you the place is not occupying you know I'm just trying to keep an eye on it for you almost like he was doing me a favor doing me a favor so he would just stay there and um you know so since that I, since now that i'm back if i need him to move no problem you know he will move thank god that he didn't give me a hard time so i get just like why, just like why would you do something like that why i mean they someone came and gave you warning to and uh, you know vacate the place leave the place and you still didn't move why please i beg I beg you, make you come out from there, my broken pigeon. Okay, so I nicely told him to please, please get your stuff and get out. <laughs> what I really wanted to say, get your shit, get your shit, and get out. 
So, anyway, so I nicely told him to leave my place, get his stuff out, and leave. I gave him a few days to leave the place. So my next person to hunt down was the carpenter. I set out, I was told that, you know, he works in the area. That place is a developing, you know, area. People are building, there's so many construction sites going on. So I found him at a construction site. When he saw me, he almost had a heart attack. So I was with my cousin. So we approached him and I said, excuse me, why have you rented my place to, you know, four groups of people who gave you the right? Am I related to you? Did you give me some of, did you give me money when I was building? Did you give me, did you give me your portion of the money? Did you give me anything to add to the building fund? No, you didn't. So who gave you the right to rent my uncompleted house to four groups of people? Actually, the, the, I would say three because the, um, the, the place where we buy the blocks, the guy gave himself permission to, to you know, to occupy the place. He went to do it himself because he knew me and he just figured out, oh, she's not here, she's gone, so let me just do what I can do, okay? free rent. So then when I found him and we were questioning him, you know, I should have brought the police with me, but anyway, this is gonna for you. It's gonna cost me more money to go and get the police and the police will probably won't do much. Maybe, yeah, they might scare him, but you know, it's gonna cost me extra money. So I decided to just take matters in my own hand and see, you know, how far I can go before I consult the police. So when he saw me, as I said, he almost shit on himself. He was like so apprehended. And he was so scared. So um, I said, excuse me, did you rent out my house to, did you rent out my um, site to this three group of people? Every one of them is saying that you, they all mentioned you, that you are the one that rented the place to me. You collected rent from them. You collected a deposit from them for however long, I don't even remember how long he collected um, rent from them. You know, in, in Ghana, usually you pay like one year advance or um, for, so for uncompleted building, I'm, I'm not sure if he charged like one year in advance, but he charged them to, you know, for them to take, um, um, to, to, for them to occupy the place. So he was like, what? What are they talking about? I don't know them. I have no clue who these people are. Peter, all of a sudden this guy is turned to Peter. You know when he denied that he knew Jesus. What? This guy said he... So, the carpenter denied these people. He said he doesn't know them at all. He don't know what they're talking about. He can't believe that they're accusing him of, you know, of this. Mind you, this guy worked at the site for a period of time. So he's very familiar with the place. He's like live in the area. So he's very, very familiar with my site. So long story short, he bluntly denied that he knew the people that are staying at my site. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I said, you know what? I know that you did. Every one of them mentioned your name, said that you took money from them. So how could you? How can you possibly? I trusted you. I gave you work for a long time. You know, I could have used some other people, but I continue to use you to work on my side. And this is how you do me. That's not even right. If you don't want any trouble, I beg, just go and give them warning to move from there. You can clearly see that he was just lying, just point blank lying. So everybody at the site, you know, people were just looking at him like, okay, what is this, what's going on here? So, you know, people were listening in and I'm sure by the time we were done with him, I'm not sure if he, you know, was even allowed to work there because they heard what was going on. So anyway, this is a long story. I left the place and then I went back to the site and I gave them a nice warning and told them, you know what, I'm giving you up to this, you know, amount of time. I'm giving you, um, yeah, about a few days, uh, like a, a, a week to 
leave my place because I'm here to continue work and with you being here I can't continue the work so please if you don't want any trouble if you don't want any if you don't want the police involved in this situation make sure that you leave this place but you know you know what these days you know laws are being implemented in Ghana so tenants probably not tenants but you know squatters probably have rights i know that squatters have rights in the states in in the states they have rights you have to go through the courts you have to go through so many channels to get rid of them you can't just just say okay kick them out throw them they have the right at times if the place is abandoned for like 10 15 years and they've occupied the place for that long they can actually claim ownership of the land can you imagine they can claim ownership of the land because the owner has abandoned that place for that long? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I don't think this is going to, you know, I don't think this is going to fly in Ghana. But anyway, I just wanted them to just nicely. I understand how tough things are. I understand that, you know, there's harsh. I feel for them. I actually felt for them and I, it pained me. To, you know want to tell them that they have to leave but they can't stay there it doesn't belong to them they will continue to live there if i just you know get soft on them so it broke as much as it broke my heart you know i just nicely give them time to leave the place so that i can continue work at my site so these things happens in Ghana. You know, there's so many uncompleted sites, you know, in Ghana. People build, you get to a certain stage, you can't continue, you run out of money, you have to travel, and then the work stop, and then people just trespass, you know, which is not right. But I understand why people do that, you know, hardship, poverty, and, you know, it's hard. So, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not right either way you look at it. Long story short, they all, you know, moved out and I continue my work there. So I decided to keep one of the um, squatters. There was a lady, um, a mature woman, who lived there with her three children. She was very, very responsible and clean. So I decided to keep her there so she can care for the place as a caretaker. I mean, I could have had somebody, I could have found someone to stay there, but instead they've lived there for some time. So I decided to let them stay, you know, and care for the place, make sure the um, place is kept neat and just keep an eye on the house. You know, people do that, but eventually, even, I mean, they're still staying there up to now. So for now, they've been there for some time, a few, I would say probably um, three years now they've been living there, you know, I'm just not ready to, you know, move there or, you know, um, to settle in there right now, but I'm working on it. But eventually, you know, I will have to find a way to settle them. That's another process. You know, when, when, um, caretakers live at your place or squatters, are li eventually you have to settle them to move. You may even have to find a place for them or give them money to say, okay, thank you for what you've done and blah, 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 this and here, take this money and, um, find yourself a place to live. Of course, I'll give them like a few months, um, notice before this happened, but eventually, I will have to cross that line you know all of this could have been prevented had I um, built a wall around my house you know but you know I was just doing um, whatever I can do at the time I didn't think that wall was necessary because I rather put the money into the building of the house than to you know put a wall around it but lesson learned you know looking back I wish I had put a wall around it and put like a gate there and then uh, put a lock on it and then have someone um, supervise the place um, once in a while so I think it's a good idea to you know when you can put a wall around to secure your place this way if you have a lock on it uh, even if somebody attempt to you know stay there it will be very difficult to climb the wall or you know change the lock so I mean they can do that too but it will make it a little bit more difficult for them to you know occupy the place so if you are building your if you are in the process of building and you don't yet have a wall around it you can you know consider this but maybe you have a your building in a nice area where you know um, 
or building in a place where people are responsible that you know nobody's gonna bother you so but if you can or maybe you have done that already maybe I was just silly to think that nothing would happen but you know if I knew if I had to do it again I would have um, built a wall around it and put a gate on it to secure the place first this would have prevented all this wahala so the pros and cons i mean sometimes too when you build a wall around it and then when you have like um the truck coming in with the cement you know sometimes they have to back in and then um deposit the um the the rocks the stones the uh, quarries or how is that how you say it you know they have to drop off the sand the blocks and you know all the building materials it's good for them to just you know drive in and then dump the stuff on the ground but when you have a wall and the gate is like you know not too big it's kind of hard for the um the truck or you know the lorry or whatever they call it to uh, maneuver through and you know and, and dump the stuff on the ground so i just think that it's best to just put a wall to secure the place and uh, you can also avoid this you know in the states they usually when squatters um occupy um, um sometimes it's a house that is um in foreclosure or um, whatever is boarded up but you know i sometimes i see signs that says it happens it happens even abroad it happens even in the developed countries so it's not just ghana it's not just um Africa is just it happens you know it happens and these are like sometimes like big mansions or big beautiful homes that are you know is for it's, it's, it's in the process of being sold or foreclosed and then people would just occupy the place if you're building and then you know work stop at the site you can have right on the wall right on the cement wall because you haven't painted the walls so you can actually paint over it but you can write something like this property is not for rent if anyone attempts to collect rent or security deposit on this property call this number and provide the number for them to call and or you know just say you know the police the police will be you know will contact you you know? so if you have something like that in big writing on the wall that would deter someone from attempting to rent or occupy the place. That's just the lesson that I've learned and uh, moving forward, you know, for future developments, for future buildings, I know I would know better. I would know better. Of course, you, you live and learn. You make your mistakes. You know, um, this is my first time building. So you, you learn. You learn from all your mistakes and then you do better when you know better. So I hope my story will serve as a cautionary tale for you this is not to discourage you this is not to make you feel like damn ghana is something else this is just to let you know what i have experienced and hopefully i can uh, prevent you from going through what i went through the point of this story or the point of this video is that i want you to learn from my experience you know let my experience be a cautionary tale for you to know you know what to do when um when you decide to build everything is not always the way we intended for it to you know happen or everything always doesn't go according to plan so i hope you learn from my story you know this is one of my many experiences that i've had you know as the first time builder in ghana so let me know um what you think about my story let me know um if you have any um, experience or similar situation that you would like to share so before you go don't forget to subscribe to my channel hit the notification button so this way whenever i upload a video you will be the first to know you will be the first to know the first to know the first to know you will be the first to know that i uploaded a video oh my god this is so corny i know i can sing but in my head oh my god i am the best singer ever sometimes i used to think back in the day i used to like imagine i'm performing on the stage with michael jackson and you know the big top stars in in the in the music industry and you can see me i'm like in my head you know your imagination can take you so far <laughs> i know i'm silly i know i'm silly don't come for me
don't come for me please don't come for me just love me okay all right so let me get serious until next time thank you so much for watching my video please feel free to share this video it may help someone you know you never know let's help one another oh and by the way we do have a group of builders you know people that are building in Ghana called the Ghana Builders Association GH Builders Association if you're interested in joining the group on WhatsApp the group was created um, by a fellow youtuber I will leave the details in the description box. if you're interested in joining the group just leave a, a message um, and then I will connect you to her all right thank you so much for stopping by and uh, come again another time until then thank you so much for watching bye bye please leave a comment make sure you like make sure you thumbs up and uh, make sure um, you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button okay I will see you next time on the next video Medasi take care thank you for watching Bye, 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 bye,